fresh water. So when I say that word, how many of you thought of this? Hands up. The water in the lakes and reservoirs. But do you realize this water that we can see on the surface of the ground is only 3% of the liquid fresh water on this planet. 97% is hidden below the ground surface, down hundreds of meters. Yes, the tree is not to scale. And <laughs> this is our groundwater. We often describe our groundwater as our freshwater savings account. We store large volumes of water down there, and it's there for when we need it. It's there for a rainy day, or actually it's there for a not so rainy day. When we have our droughts and there's limited precipitation, the water levels in our lakes and reservoirs start going down. And so we turn to groundwater, and we pump groundwater to the surface. So we've often assumed that there's this large, unlimited supply of groundwater down there that will always be there when we need it. But climate change is causing us to rethink this assumption. Climate change is already having an impact on our groundwater resources. Because of the increasing number and severity of droughts, we're turning more and more to our groundwater. And all around the world, including in California, water levels are going down. We are depleting our savings account. This is already happening now and is only going to get worse. And at the same time, we have a planet with a population on its way to 10 billion people. So how are we going to deal with this double whammy of climate change and people? How are we going to provide the water that 10 billion people are going to need, also recognizing this is a shared resource and there are natural ecosystems also dependent upon this water? What are we going to do? We need new solutions. So the solution I'm working on with my students and colleagues is to provide the support needed for effective, sustainable groundwater management so that we can ensure the long-term quantity and quality of our groundwater resources. So management, so how do you manage a groundwater system down there hidden below the ground surface? Well, you need to start by mapping out the plumbing system. So where's the sand and gravel? The sand and gravel is critical. That's where there are large volumes of water that we can pump to the surface. And very simple model of the subsurface, where's the clay? Clay also contains water, but drains very slowly. So once we get an idea of what's down there, then we have to put the ins and outs into this picture. And the outs, it's primarily us. Driving wells down into that sand and gravel and pulling that water up to the surface. And it's critically important that we have some ins. So how is water? getting back into this system to maintain some balance. When it rains, water gets down on the ground surface and can move through pathways down to these sand and gravel regions. And this process is called recharge. This is what replenishes, adds water back to the sand and gravel. So sustainable management, it requires a model of the groundwater system a model that allows a manager to predict the response of the climate change to climate change and take action. So we need a sufficiently accurate model so that the predictions we make are going to be reliable. So I know what you're thinking. So she's up there with a picture drawing circles and arrows going in and out, but what does a groundwater manager typically know about the groundwater resources in their area? Just a little bit more than this. So how do we get data about what's down there? Most information is acquired by drilling wells. And drilling wells are great. They give you a lot of information. But the problem is the information is right where you drill your well. So huge question marks as to what's happening between your well locations, or particularly below the depth of your wells. So I often compare the challenge groundwater managers face, we all face right now, in managing our groundwater resources to the challenge doctors faced at the start of the 20th century. They had their own form of drilling wells. It was called exploratory surgery. And then along came medical imaging. And medical imaging revolutionized the approach to managing human health. My vision is that earth imaging is going to revolutionize the approach to managing the health of our groundwater systems. Well, we can't exactly do this. <laughs> but 
I am working with my students on a number of different earth imaging technologies, earth imaging systems, and exploring various ways we can use earth imaging to study, thereby understand, and therefore manage our groundwater systems. Well, because they only gave me eight minutes today instead of the eight hours I asked for, I'm only going to be able to talk about one of these amazing earth imaging systems, and it's the airborne electromagnetic system. This is a helicopter deployed system that moves this imaging instrument across the ground surface. The question we've been asking, can we use this to image the groundwater systems of California? Can we use this to see below the ground hundreds of meters to figure out what's down there? How does this system work? By mapping out the electrical resistivity of the subsurface. This is an electromagnetic method. We map out where there are conductive regions down there, where are there resistive regions down there. And then what we're working on is then transforming that geophysical property map into what's really needed. Where are the clays down there? Where's the sand and gravel down there? So we conducted a pilot study now a little over two years ago working in Tulare Irrigation District, which is the yellow squares in the San Joaquin Valley in the southern part of the Central Valley. We partnered with two fantastic groundwater managers, Paul Hendrick and Aaron Fukuda. They needed information about their groundwater system. Could we use this earth imaging system to get the information they need? And it was an incredible success. So you're looking at a Google Earth image. So Google Earth on the bottom. These data will all, were all acquired below the surface. They're projected on top just to keep track of where we are. This is the electrical resistivity. We're seeing down to 500 meters mapping out the properties of the subsurface. The spatial density of data is incredible. It's as if you drill a well every 60 meters and go down 500 meters and figure out what's there. So now we've transformed it to a map. Sand and gravel is the yellow. Clay is the blue. Having an image of their groundwater system like this allows the groundwater managers to understand what's happening now and to think about what could happen in the future. In this area, there's a lot of drilling from the yellow sand and gravel. But images such as this reveal the large amount of clay that's present and is helping them understand how pumping from the sand and gravel is draining the clay. And that's what's causing the massive subsidence in this area. The ground is sinking up to 20 centimeters a year in this area. Draining the clays is also what's bringing the arsenic into their drinking water. And images such as this are allowing them to find new solutions to what is fundamentally the key problem there. It's a system out of balance. The water coming out is far exceeding the water going in. So they look at images like this and find locations where there's sand on the ground surface and look for sand pathways down to the deeper parts of the groundwater system that they're pumping and figure out how recharge could actually get down and replenish the groundwater supply. And they're no longer relying on natural recharge. It rains, the water trickles down. They are flooding zones of the surface, either flooding fields or putting in place basins that can capture stormwater. And so images such as this allow them to think strategically about correcting this imbalance that we have. So what's happening now? Well, this pilot study, I'm thrilled to say, was such a success. I now have everyone from individual growers, water agencies, state agencies, the governor's office asking, how can we do this throughout California? And I'm really thrilled to tell you that the planning is underway to adopt this earth imaging technology as the basis for groundwater management in California. Yeah. No, it's like, yes! <laughs> it's those moments in your life when you go tick on one of those big boxes that you've had. So what I'm doing right now is leading a two-year pilot project. We're halfway through. And it's, how do we scale this up? How can we deploy this system to image the groundwater basins of California? So we're partnering with three water agencies. The funding's coming from these local agencies, state agencies, working with a great team of people and hot off the press, data that we acquired up in Butte County in the northern part of the Central Valley. Instead of the pilot where I had eight, 100 kilometers of data, we have 800 kilometers of data. 
Everywhere the helicopter flew, we can see down 350 meters. And this is mapping out the electrical resistivity, where the reds are. It's where we have sands and gravels. The blue is clay rich. But the water managers up there are just thrilled to have data like this imaging the subsurface as the basis for their management efforts. So we're working on new, new solutions. We're working on new solutions to have earth imaging adopted as the basis for managing our groundwater resources. And I can tell you as an earth scientist, I have seen this not only as an opportunity to do fascinating research with wonderfully talented students and colleagues, but I've also seen this repeatedly as a responsibility. At Stanford, working with my students, we are generating new knowledge. And I truly believe that with that knowledge comes responsibility. Responsibility to take that knowledge into action. And in case you haven't been able to tell, I love doing that. And that's the main reason I'm here at Stanford. I can't imagine any other institution where I would get the level of encouragement, the level of support that I get to go out from here, partner with water agencies, and work to find new solutions to the management of our most precious resource, our fresh water. Thanks. Thank you.